Well, it's Wednesday, March 18th, and I'm going to read to you today from Psalm 8. And when you think about the words of Psalm 8, think about this place we live in the Monterey area and the beauty of all that God's created around us. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you would care about them? Yet you have made them a little lower than the angels. You've crowned them with glory and honor. That's talking about us. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All the flocks, the herds, and the animals of the wild. The birds of the sky, the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I want to encourage you this week to notice the beauty of creation. Whether you drive down the Salinas Valley with the beauty of the greens and the hills and the shadows of the sun rises and sets, whether you're driving along the coast and the beautiful peaks of the ocean and all that God has made, or just looking at all the trees and the beauty of this place. In the midst of challenging times, notice the beauty of what God has made. Slow down, take note, and pause and say, Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Pray with me if you would. Lord, we declare those words. How majestic is your name in all the earth. God, thank you for the beauty of creation, of trees and flowers and plants, of of blue skies, of of, of rainy days, of all that you've made. Thank you for the beauty of people that you've put around us. We pray that in the midst of this time that can be challenging, that we will notice the beauty of your creation and give you praise. We pray this in your name, Jesus, and for your glory. Amen. Well, Pastor Sean's going to share a few few words about what's happening in the life of Shoreline Church. Hello, Shoreline. It's Pastor Sean. Hey, I know that this morning, for each one of us, uh, we woke up to a changed world. Uh, For those of you who live here in Monterey County, you know, today actually we woke to a a shelter in place that our, our county offices determined was the best practice to put in place as we try to slow the spread of the coronavirus. And so, as you're probably wondering, uh, what, what is the church? How is the church functioning? What are we doing differently? And so I wanted to provide you with an update on that today. In order to frame that, I want to, be, want to remind you of Pastor Kevin's, uh, his words, when he, when he talks about the purpose, uh, really the functions of the church. Number one is, is to, to, to glorify God through worship. And number two is to grow believers. And number three is actually go out and actually share the gospel. And that's really the functions, the essentials of any church. And so I want to frame my update really given those three areas. First, in the area of worship. How are we changing? How are we modifying how we do worship here at Shoreline? Well, in the past, we've always gathered on Sunday mornings as one body. We've lifted up just songs of worship. We've spent time in the Word and prayer. And we're doing that differently now. And as you experienced last Sunday, and as we will continue to do with this new shelter in place, effective all the way out to April 8th, we are actually gonna continue to gather in worship, but we're gonna do it online. And so we're gonna invite you 8.30, 10 o'clock and 11.30 for the next three Sundays, we will actually be gathering online. So we wanna invite you to join us in that worship experience online. Now, Pastor Sean, does that mean that that our 25th anniversary of Shoreline that we were gonna celebrate on March 29th, is that canceled? Well, I'm gonna tell you, it's not canceled. We're gonna postpone that. And actually, Pastor Kevin has prepared a third message in the series on the pathway to peace. He's gonna bring us that message on that day on March 29th. And we'll get that information out to you once we get the March, excuse me, the 25th anniversary rescheduled. Uh, We will celebrate that at a later date in the year. Well, that means also, Pastor Sean, what are we going to do about night night of worship? Well, as we know, the first Wednesday of every month, and of course this month, next month, it'll be April 1st, and we are going to, in fact, gather for night of worship, but we will also do that online. And so we are coming up with, our team's coming up with a creative online, uh, really family, home-based worship experience that everyone will be able to participate in, including inviting you and your family to participate in communion together. So stay tuned for more on that, but we're excited for Night of Worship in April. Once again, that will be an online worship experience. Now, in the area of growing believers, 
Well, Shoreline, just as Shoreline has always done since its 25 years of existence, has adapted to ever-changing situations, we're doing the same in how we help people stay connected and continue to grow spiritually. One of the ways we're doing that is we're leveraging online technology for all those different groups that used to either meet in homes or here at the church, we're now leveraging technology for them to meet online. A great example is that our children's ministry is developing some family devotionals that they'll be posting on a daily basis on our website. We also saw last night a great example of leveraging technology. Our student ministry team actually held a youth group online. And uh, Danny, Danny Killo, who's the director of our student ministries, he hosted a Google Meet and they had 23 high school students who gathered online to share in that experience. And of course, next week, we'll be expanding that to include our middle school life groups. So if you have students, high school, middle school, uh, stay tuned for more on that. We hope that we can continue to expand those online experiences. And those areas of small groups, Bible studies, those types of things, we're also offering more online content, specifically for the women's Bible studies. They, now you can get all of the women's Bible studies online on our website. Also, men's Bible studies and small groups. We're expanding those. Stay tuned for more on those. My prayer is that for our small groups and for our Bible studies, we will have opportunities for you to connect on a daily basis, both in the morning and then in the evenings. And so we'll continue to press into that and leverage technology as we see fit. And of course, our heart's desire and prayer is that with all of these online experiences that we will continue to offer, is that you will remember that you can stay connected to the body of believers here at Shoreline Church and that you will grow spiritually. And another area where actually you can grow spiritually is in the area of passionate prayer. And so this week, you'll notice in your email you received earlier today, actually we've got some prayer direction. And in those prayer direction, we're asking now more than ever, our world, our country, our cities, our families and our neighborhoods, they need prayer. We all need prayer. And so will you commit, as you see this email, you'll see the specific prayer direction for this week, and we'll have those each week, we'll have updated prayer direction. Will you commit to pray in those prayer directions that we give you? Will you commit to pray daily, all throughout your day, wherever you're at, and continue to lift up those prayers to our Heavenly Father? The other area I wanna just say thank you and really be encouraged is that growing and joyful generosity. This past Sunday, we actually saw an increase in the number of people at Shoreline who gave online. Some, for the first time ever, they, they changed their giving from maybe writing a check to actually giving online. And so we just wanna say first and foremost, thank you Shoreline for your continued faithful and consistent giving to the work here at Shoreline Church. We also wanna encourage you, if you've not yet taken that step to give, or you're interested in maybe moving your giving to online giving, if you'll just contact us here at Shoreline and we'll help get you connected with the right folks who can make that happen. So again, thank you Shoreline for your faithful and consistent generosity. And we know that the last area is sharing the gospel, going out and sharing the gospel. How is Shoreline adapting uh, in this ever-changing situation to continue to share the gospel and show the love of Jesus? One of the ways we're doing that here at Shoreline is our food pantry is still open. In fact, I talking to Pastor David, who oversees the ministry that leads that food pantry and, and really is the team that, that organizes. Yesterday, they had a record number of people who came here to Shoreline to be part and to receive food um, from the food pantry. Well, in addition to receiving food, our team was actually able to offer prayer for those people that came, as well as offer them the hope that is only found in Jesus Christ. And so we expect that the food pantry, the need for people will continue to increase. And so we're excited for what the Lord is going to do for that ministry. And of course, Shoreline, we will continue to adapt. And if there's a need, we will expand the food pantry opportunities and offerings as well. We also know that those of you who participate in the ministry at Dorothy's Kitchen over in Salinas, where they actually share a food and the hope of Jesus Christ with the homeless population there, um, that ministry is continuing. And so if you're interested in that, you can contact us at info at Shoreline and we'll give you more information on that. So how can you share the gospel? How can you share the hope of Jesus Christ in your own lives? Well, this week I've got one challenge for you. Would you consider in your life looking at maybe 10 people in your life 
who could possibly use a, a word of encouragement in these very difficult and uncertain times, and those people that maybe don't yet know Jesus Christ. And would you actually commit to calling those people, commit to reaching out to them, and, and whether that's through the phone or whether that's through FaceTime, connect with them and offer to pray for them. And who knows how the Lord can use that one simple act of kindness as you bring the light of Jesus Christ into their life. And who knows what the Lord will do with that and perhaps draw them even closer to Him in their life. So that's it, Shoreline, for this week. Stand strong and continue to stay connected to the body of Christ here at Shoreline Church. God bless and have a great week.